Hello and welcome to The Extra Mile. I'm Linda Boudreau. Our guests today are Jade Mitchell of Jade's Flowers and her mom, Julia Robertson. So uh, we're welcome both of you, first of all. Welcome. So glad you could make it today. Uh, thank you for having us. And Jade, thank you for coming from Denham Springs. Is that right? And you drove all the way over here to be on our show, so thank you so much. Now, you do something called Jade's Flowers. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And what is Jade's Flowers? Um, I make duct tape flower pins and pencils and, br and bracelets, and I also make rings. And um, we sell them, and all the money goes to the Denver Springs Animal Shelter. Okay, so all of that said, then, you are, how old are you now? Nine. Nine, and you've been doing this since you were? Eight. Eight, so you're, you've been doing it for about a year now, is that right? Now, how did you get started making um, duct tape pins? <laughs> Well, a girl on the bus, she had a flower pin, and um, she told me about them, and she told me how to make it. So I went home, and I started playing with duct tape, and it took me a long time to figure out how to do it right, but I finally got it. And um, my mom was telling me I, did, I wasn't selling it for enough money because I was selling them at school for a dollar, and the duct tape cost, like, about three dollars. And, well, she said I should probably donate it somewhere, and I could raise the price. And... Um, she, I decided that I wanted to do it for the animal shelter. Okay, that was your charity of choice, is that right? So you really do love animals, I take it. Okay, we're going to talk about those in a minute, but I wanted to kind of show this. This is one of your pins, and you have like a, it's kind of like a rose on top, huh? It's sort of like a flower rose with a big, a big diamond on the end. Do you, did you make this design up yourself? Yes, ma'am. Is it hard to do? Mm, not really, once you've learned. Did you have to create this? I mean, did you have to figure out how to do it? Because your friend was doing it. Did she give you some pointers, or you just went home and practiced and figured it out? She didn't really give me any, like, a lot of details, so I just went home and tried. You must be pretty proud of her. I don't think I could figure this out. Let me take out the word thing. I couldn't figure this out. I mean, I, first I'd have duct tape stuck all over everything, yeah, mm -hmm. and have a mess. It took a lot of practice, and her first her first flowers did not look that good. They've definitely improved. So are you a sick to it in this kind of person? Once you decide to do something, you just keep working and working and working until you get it? Mm, normally. Which is probably a really good quality to have, don't you think? So did you have any idea when you started making pins that it would take off and become such a big deal? Not at all. And it is a big deal. It really is a big deal. So you're selling these where now? Denim Springs, but we normally mail, like we Okay. Ship. And how did, how did people even find out about this? And we have a Facebook on Jade's Flowers. Okay, and so they can go to Facebook, look at Jade's Flowers, and you have pictures of all the things that you make, is that right? So we make the pins, and you have pins, and you also have highlighters. So, you know, if you don't want to write, if you want to highlight, you can have these, and these are just great fun. I guess these are pretty popular at your school, too. I guess a lot of kids have them. How much are you selling these for now? Um, $4 each. $4, still a very good deal, wouldn't you say? That's right. Mm -hmm. And what else do you make? You make bracelets make for special orders? And we're going to try to get a shot of this bracelet, which is really pretty. Did you make all this up, these designs? I mean, these, these patterns and these uses? Of, look how pretty that is. That's, that's, that looks like a great thing for a Mardi Gras parade. Huh? Yeah, Mardi she Gras also parade. makes hair clips and shoe clips that look like those also. Okay. These are great. How long does it take you to make one of these, Jay? Um, about half an hour. That's all? That's pretty good. So I'm going to let you wear this for the rest of the show because I just think it looks so pretty on you. Um, so do you make up your own designs? I mean, do you, do you just sit around and think, oh, I think I'll try a barrette now or a, hair, a headband or... Do you see these in magazines? How do you come up with your designs? Sometimes my mom helps me think of them. Okay. Well, sometimes she'll get orders, too, from certain people that want something specific that she's never done before. Okay. And so she'll just keep practicing, and usually they're good enough that she can turn around and sell them to them. But like the headband, that's not something she really thought of, but somebody asked her to make a one. Because so. I can see that really kind mm -hmm. of popping, huh, and looking really good. Yeah, they're really cute. And it's the same design, the same flower design, just on a headband or sometimes on a ponytail holder or okay. shoe clip or something. Okay. You have a pretty big business. I'm thinking, how does this work with going to school? You're in, what, fourth grade now? Yes, ma'am. So how do you manage to keep all your, your cottage industry going and your school and 
coming over to Lafayette to do a TV show. You must be one busy young lady, huh? Do you like being busy? And I think you must have a lot of help. How does your mom help you? She brings me everywhere to, um, like to uh, give them the pens. Sometimes she'll just meet someone, and sometimes she just helps me make the pens whenever I have a big order. Okay. And sometimes she just helps me, you know, like making the dog treats. Okay, and we're gonna talk about those dog treats in a minute, which I think is such a cool idea. So you just, but when you say a big order, what would a big order be? About how many pens is a big order? Um, 30 or over. <laughs> so you'll sell 30 at a time? Sometimes. Wow, 100 at a time sometimes. Really? Mm -hmm. So who, who's, who are your customers? How, how are people finding out and, and placing these big orders? They just go to your Facebook page or? You, she'll get a lot of office orders. Okay. A lot of times like the, um, what was it, the clerk of court's office. All the ladies got together and just put in an order. And I want to say the marshal's office okay. or something like that. Um, you know, so several office orders. She got one at, um, you know, Lard Oil in Denham Springs. All the ladies just get together and place big orders at a time. So people are knowing about her in Denham Springs, oh, yeah, I yeah, she's take. well known in Denham Springs, <laughs> yes. You must be very proud of I'm her. I'm very proud of her, very. She's keeping me very busy. I can, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So the pins were the first thing, and, and you decided since, you know, since selling them for a dollar wasn't really very profitable, that you would begin to donate. And you said you were giving them to the Denham Springs Animal Shelter, is that right? Why did you pick the animal shelter? Because I like giving them to animals they don't have much. Yeah, yeah, so you're an animal lover? More than anything, huh? When you grow up, what do you want to do? You I want to be a veterinarian. Okay, so you, so that is what you want to be when you, when you, so you have a great love for animals. So what have you been yes. able to do for the animal shelter so far? I've gotten them um, toys and treats, large fans, refrigerators, kennels, um, heaters, and like I've, we've given them money. Wow, this is no small enterprise, then, is it? It's really over, growing. A little over five thousand dollars worth of items, or you know, total with money and items. She helped the Natchitoches Humane Society with a thousand dollars towards their uh, what was it? Their gravel playground. Mm -hmm. They had an animal that um, died. Yeah. Anyway, they needed to disinfect their playground and add some gravel, so she helped with the playground for the thousand dollars. Wow. So when a, when a shelter asks for help, Jay, do you decide if it's something you think you can do? Or do, is that a family decision? How do you, how do you decide to give $1,000 to the Natchitoches Animal Shelter? Um, we normally all think about it. And okay. See if it feels right? Okay. She prefers to help the ones like the, um, that was the Natchitoches Humane Society. Okay. You know, they work as a rescue. Right. Um, we went to the festival there, so she felt like, and we all felt like giving back to that area was a better thing to do since the money was coming from that area. Got so it. that's where the festival happened to be. Got but typically it. it's her hometown, Denham Springs, or Livingston Parish. And uh, she prefers to help the, the shelters that are no-kill. Denham Springs is one of the only no-kill shelters, I believe the only no-kill shelter in Livingston Parish. But several of the rescue groups in the SPCA, they always strive really hard to prevent any kill, you right. know, at the shelters there. So she really likes to help with the rescue groups and the and help the ones that are trying to prevent the, the killing of the animals. And it's really, it's tough, you mm -hmm. know, it's really, really tough. So the work that you're doing is really important. And I know a lot of people feel that way, but I just want to thank you on behalf of all those animals um, for what you're doing. And I don't know if we can get a good shot of your t-shirt or not, but, um, I'm going to try, and you designed this, and well, we're going to talk about it for a few minutes while we, while we try to get a good close-up shot of it, but you can just tell me about it. You designed this t-shirt yourself, right? Yes, ma'am, I drew the dog. You drew the dog, and it's Jade's Flowers Pens for Pauls, is that? And do you sell your t-shirts too, or is that just something that? We sell them. Okay. See, there, there's just so much you can do. There's yes. so, so much you can do. And so people can help support the animals with the t-shirts, with the pins, with whatever. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do for this year? Do you have any specific goals, things you want to accomplish? Um, we're going to try to do a, um, like a, like get 
barrels and um, like put the barrels places so people can drop off dog food. Okay, that's another, so that's something that you're just starting to do then, now it's kind of grown, huh? So what do you call your food drive for puppies? What do you call it? Um, give a dog a bone and blanket. Give a dog a bone and blanket. So, and that you're doing that, why? How did that come to be? We just thought about it. My, my mom came up with the idea of doing a food drive and she came up with the name. Okay. So part of what you're doing then, let me just see if I'm getting this kind of all in order, is that you, you make the, 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 the pens and things and, and that is money that's raised and donated, but you've really kind of expanded, it mm -hmm. sounds like, because the need is so great. The is need that is, fair to say? Yes, the need is so great that there's never enough. And then also, you know, living in a small town, people can only order so many pens. So that's true. That's kind of why she's gone to the treats. And, and then when they ask for... Um, when the shelter asked for blankets and bowls and for for uh, food, what made us think of the uh, barrels, like the food drives that they have for people, would be right. for dogs, is just to make it convenient for people to drop them off because sometimes people want to help donate and they may live an hour away. And it's, you know, so we don't always know, know that not everybody feels comfortable always sending money. Right. So if there were some locations, you know, across town where people could drop off the items, it would be a lot easier for people, more convenient okay. where people would drop off. Yeah, I think people want to give, but it has to be pretty easy for them. Yes. Because otherwise, yeah, otherwise other stuff gets in the way. Right. So what do you do then? How do you do this drive? Are you involved in it? What do you do for it? Um, I, me and my mom, we um, go and get, the, um, like, sometimes we'll go and get the stuff that people are going to donate. Okay. Yeah, we just meet people, or if we go to their house, if it's close, or if not, we'll try to meet in a central location mm -hmm. to get the items. We don't have the barrels yet. That's a goal for this year. Okay, okay. Yeah. So now you're just kind of picking it up. Yeah, we just meet them and pick <laughs> it up. Yeah, wow. from car to car and just wow. load it up. So that's And the pictures are all on Facebook. Of, so, okay. Yeah. yeah. Y'all really go go to her Facebook page because I mean there, there's so much information there and if you're not if you're not ready to buy a pen from today's show you will be after you visit the Facebook page I promise you so so you're doing give a dog a bone why a blanket because like the dogs need to be able to sleep with a blanket outside since it's cold that's right and as it got cold this year that's when the shelter started asking for blankets huh before you started doing this Jade had you been to the shelters did you know about what happens with animals? Did you know the real problems and plight that puppies and kittens have? I did not. Um, the only, I think the only other time that I remember was when I was four. I, she brought me to the shelter. So what do you think? What did you think when you started seeing how this is? I didn't like how they were, like, sometimes killed. Yeah. So that that's tough, huh? So the, the no-kill shelters is really the way to go, but for us to keep all those animals, we've got to have community support right. because it's not easy to do. Is that, is that part of what you want to see happen more of? What do you think people need to do to protect the animals and to keep this from happening? Try not to let them have any more babies so they mm -hmm. can... Spay and neuter. Spay and neuter. <laughs> that mm -hmm. would be one step, yeah. What else? Um, adopt the animals. So it's, it's a very big deal. I'm just so impressed that you picked that particular project out of the many that you could have. Do you have a puppy or a kitten at home? I have a puppy. Okay. And what's your puppy's name? Sassy. Okay. And do you play with her a lot? Is she like your best friend? Normally when I walk in the door, she's running. she runs up to me, so I play with her some for a minute. So that's pretty special too, huh? In fact, You've gotten so that you now are making dog treats. Am I right about that? And I've got so many right here. Just loving these dog treats. So this is a bone. So what do you call your dog treats? We call them Jade's Mutt Biscuits. Jade's Mutt Biscuits. So and this is your this is you make these yourself. You you went on the internet and you found a recipe, is that right? So what's in these biscuits? And here's um. a, we have a paw. What's in them? What's, what's your There's recipe? There's like eggs, um, a lot of butter, okay. a little bit of salt, wheat flour, and dry milk. Okay, and these are, these are healthy for our pets, right? There's no uh, additives, no preservatives, mm -hmm. nothing like that. How do you do the color? I mean, because animals can't have, 
can't have sugar. Sugar. Well, not high contents of sugar. Okay, so, so how do we make the color? Um, Remember? Egg. I know there's an egg in it, but what's it? Egg and um, just a little bit of water and food coloring. Okay. So was yeah. this your idea that it was time to start making dog treats so that Sassy would be even mm -hmm. happier when you got in? It was both of our <laughs> This is a collaborative effort, isn't We're it? Talk, really? We talk about it all the time. We're always back and forth, and sometimes we have a hard time remembering who thought of what because we're always talking about different ideas. And it really doesn't matter who thought of what. No, does it, and my so. sister lives across the street, and she's always brainstorming with us, also. So it's kind of a family thing. She's just, uh, you know, she's the one that chose the animal shelter, and she's more of the artist, and she's working on uh, learning how to sew now, so she can make little dog pillows and toys, uh -huh. and. Um, it's just that's her love I mean I, I love helping her my sister loves helping her and it's just her choice of where she wants to put the money and I'm glad she chose animal shelter because I she's mean, the she's really the animal lover in the family yeah I think it makes all the difference in the world and and you're learning so many things as you're as you're doing this I mean between learning how to sew and learning how to bake and learning how to work with duct tape I mean who would have thought mm -hmm. huh who would have ever thought things, yeah, yeah did, you, did you ever have an interest in running a business I never thought about it but you're doing that now, you know. Tell her what you want to own. I want to own a, an animal shelter when I get older. You know, I think with you that may be possible. Anything is possible, don't you think? Anything is possible. And with the experience that you're getting now in, in raising funds and running businesses and, and being accountable, uh, you know, you can make that happen. You work a lot of festivals, too, don't you? Or some festivals? Is that a way that you get the word out? And we have this. Uh, this is a Jade's Flowers wristband. And what was this one from? Um, we would throw them at our parade. Okay, so not just festivals. You do parades. She did one parade. They're time-consuming. So The parades are? <laughs> yes. I mean, it's, you know, we have to kind of pick and choose festivals and parades just because... It's hard to keep up with the amount of, uh, if she needs pins for a parade, I mean, for a uh, festival, you know, it might take three months to get enough pins to, to sell at a festival. Right, right. So she can't do, you know, do she them every month. But she every, have to go every to few months, <laughs> yes. And the, the bracelets were just for the Denim Springs Christmas Parade. Oh, just that's to the toss only one out, she's just done. To toss just to out. toss out. She didn't toss the pins. Those okay, are, okay. Yeah, that's a different, that's a yeah, whole different too valuable. Kind of thing. That's a whole different kind of thing. So, um... Marketing, y'all have done a really good job, I think, of, of getting the word out. How have you been able to do that? I guess that's your job, huh, Mom? Yes, uh, Facebook, and I have a really close friend, uh, Tina Carlton. We've become friends with since we met her on Facebook, actually. And uh, she's, you know, helped Jade with uh, a lot of this marketing stuff. She works for a marketing company, so she's, she's donated a lot of her time in helping her with these flyers and her banner and the design of the shirt. Jade Jade came up with the dog. She drew the dog, but this um, friend of ours that works for a marketing company created the logo. So really, this has been a real collaborative We've effort had a, with yes. a whole lot of people. We've had a few very involved. committed people. Yes, uh, and, and she's got sponsors too. Oh, what is that all about? What do your sponsors do? Um, they would uh, help pay for the. <laughs> They pay for your tent like, and your yeah. logo and your banners. So they kind of helped get her started. They paid $75 in order to be on her banner. Okay. So half her banner is her logo. The other half are the sponsors' names and phone numbers. And the, the banner goes everywhere we go pretty much. Okay. And, and, they, and that just helped pay for her tent and her banner and just really all of her upfront costs so that she can go out to all the festivals. Okay. She wouldn't be able to go to all the festivals just off the money she makes from the pins because right. those all go to the shelters. Right. And she goes, she does donate to other shelters, not just the Denham Springs Shelter. That was the originally the when we started with the Denham Springs Animal Shelter, but now she's reached out to some of the other shelters. If they, especially if they come to us, then, you know, I figured if, you know, if they're going to take the time to ask for help, we're going to help as much as we can. So what are some of the big needs that shelters are having? What are they asking for? A lot are asking for um, blankets and bowls. And one asked for food. Food. And heaters. Heaters in the winter are a big thing. Um, she donated five heaters this year to one and some big fans in the summertime. So fans and heaters and blankets really just about keeping 
keeping warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Okay, and that's really, I guess, one of the biggies. And the bowls, you don't even think about the bowls. The but. bowls have to be stainless steel. They're supposed to be at this partic one particular shelter. They all have their own rules. And this Some is just them. for hygiene and for safety? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to the shelters to check things out, do you find that you have favorite animals that you really do want to see every time you go? Who's your favorite? Uh, Gerald. <laughs> and what is Gerald? I don't know what kind of dog it is. It looks like a big wiener dog. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens if Gerald gets adopted? It already did. Oh, he did. <laughs> oh. So now you're going to have to have a new favorite. <laughs> but isn't that what you want, is for them to get homes? And I guess, is that another message that while you're out there talking about all this, that you do want to kind of encourage people to... Definitely. To adopt? Yes. And is that what you're going to do eventually, adopt one? Have you got your eye on one already? I have a lot of favorites, but... <laughs> <laughs> but... Oh, yeah, she says that she's in her house. She's going to have, um, what do you call it? Like a little shelter in the back of your house? I want to have a big room, and it's going to have concrete on the floor. The floor is going to be concrete, and it's going to have drains, and I'm going to have a lot of animals in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got it all planned. And why concrete and, and drains? Because when they use the bathroom, it'll drain, and I need a water hose. Okay. <laughs> you got to be able to keep it clean, huh? That's right. <laughs> you know, I think all this is going to happen. I think you're definitely on the right track. So do you have any plans other than just the, you've got your dog biscuits? And I guess the next big thing you're going to be doing is the pillows and the toys that you're going to be making. Do you have toy designs already? Um, we know we're going to, like, put little squeakers in them. But we're just going to use some fabric from the store. We're going to try to get, like, some dog fabric, like maybe with some bones on it or something. Okay. And do you think dogs like squeakers? Have you, does your dog like squeakers? My aunt's dog does. My dogs do, too. It's, you know, they just get all excited about that. I'm going to go back to your dog biscuits because I forgot to mention. You have two flavors, right? What are the flavors of dog biscuits? Peanut butter and milk bone. And what's the difference between the recipes? Just You just add peanut butter to one, or they're very different? They're a little bit different. Okay. So they have, a, like, maybe one thing the same. Okay. What reminded me is my dogs like peanut butter, mm -hmm. so, you know, that was, that was the thing. So um, I guess in the last couple of minutes that we have, if people want to do a special order, like, let's say, like, I'm, I'm holding here uh, an LSU Mm -hmm. pen, which would certainly be appropriate and fitting for many of our Tiger fans, or if they want to do a Mardi Gras or a Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. how do they go about doing that? How do, they, how do they reach you and get to place an order with you? Normally, they either email us or they call and my mom writes it down. Okay. Or Facebook. On Facebook, under, under About, on her Facebook it asks to email the order to jadesflowers at yahoo.com okay. just, just so that they don't get lost on Facebook. But I initially, was wondering that. their initial contact is usually Facebook, and then the order goes to jadesflowers at yahoo.com, and then we correspond with each other that way. But if it's through Facebook, we'll, we'll do it that way as well. But, you know, we prefer it to be through the email if, you know, if it's a big order especially. Okay. okay. And, then, and you've shipped all internationally, right? You've had, where have you sent your pens? Hawaii. Finland. Finland. And somebody shipped Lots them to someone shipped them to Poland. Poland. So doesn't that feel good to know that all around the world people are writing with Jade's flower pens? Isn't that who would have thought? You know? I mean I know. We never thought. She started off door knocking, just going door to door and it just it blew up from there. Some lady wrote to Smiley Anders at the advocate and then she just got bigger and bigger. It really wasn't planned that way. She just wanted to help with toys and treats at the local shelter, and it ended up being a lot bigger than we expected. Wow, and you know, this is such good training ground. There is so much, so much uh, experience and knowledge and information that you're getting from this that it's, you're gonna be unstoppable, Miss Jade. <laughs> Anything you wanna say in the last minute that we have? Uh, I'm glad I can help the animals. I'm glad you can help the animals too. And what about you? What do you want people to leave today's show knowing? Just that it's important that if you're going to purchase an animal, really consider adopting an animal instead of spending all the money on, on purchasing one because there's so many neat homeless animals at the shelters. 
And a lot of times you think that you can't get certain animals like Labradors and full bred animals, but they're, they're there. If you just keep, keep looking, you'll usually find what you're looking for instead of having to pay for it. And the need, as you said, is so great. Yes. So, so thank you both. I want to thank you, Jade. And I want to thank you, Julie, thank for coming you. over, being with us, for sharing this. And I want to thank you for all that you did. And I want to thank you for watching The Extra Mile.